Hi, this is Alan Gleeson. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for further tutorials. As mentioned in the intro video, we are going to look at the concept of using the studio as an instrument. We will look at the techniques and the approaches as they developed in chronological order. Some of the first individuals to be credited with using the studio as an instrument are Pierre Schaeffer and Pierre Henri, who were working in the GRM studios in Paris in the 1950s and 60s. There they developed an aesthetic that they called music concrete or concrete music. The idea of working with sound as sound objects to be manipulated and processed using the recording studio and tape editing techniques. Key to their approach was the tape recorder, its operation, manipulation and the editing possibilities that it allowed. The first technique we are going to look at is very speed, changing the speed of the tape which causes four effects. Altering the speed of the tape alters the pitch, the speed, the timbre and the formance of a sound. Formants are resonant frequencies within a sound that give it its particular characteristic. When you alter the formants, you alter the fundamental character of the sound. A very speed function is available in most DAWs. In Ableton, I will use the repitch warp mode, but in Logic Pro X, you can use the flex time speed option. In Ableton, you can alter the warp markers to vary the speed of the audio playback, and in Logic, you would alter the flex markers. As we are only using a single technique, very speed, as it was back in the day, the characteristic of the original sound is crucial and a lot of trial and error testing is required to see what works best. So I have a mix of sounds here that I'm going to use throughout this tutorial. The first sound is the recording of a clothesline moving. So typically on a tape machine, you had options to play the tape back at different speeds, usually at 7.5 inches per second, 15 inches per second, 30 inches per second. So we were to say that this was at 15 inches per second. In my warp section here, I have it already set to repitch, and if I half the tempo so that its original tempo is 57.5, and my main tempo of the session is at 115, it will play back at twice the speed. So that would be equivalent of playing the machine back at 30 inches per second. So I'll put it back to playing at say 15, and the other thing you could do with tape machines is that you could play them at half speed at seven and a half inches per second. So if I double the tempo here, because the session is playing back at half that tempo, you would play it back twice as long. And of course, the pitch is also dropped by an octave. The other thing you'll notice here, as well as this affecting the pitch and the tempo of the material, if there's any ambience on the sound, as in reverb, this will also be affected in that when you slow the tape down like we did here by half, you're also doubling the size of the reverb in that space. Play it at the original tempo. You can hear a tighter reverb and speed it up. It's even tighter again. So if I really slow it down, you can hear it has a lot more reverb on it. So the other thing I mentioned is that the formants will get changed on a particular sound. So I play this piano example here. So when I really slow the playback down, the sound becomes very distorted and unrecognizable as a piano. On other sounds, say something like a cello, if I was to speed it up, the formants have shifted and now it sounds something like a violin, as in the instrument has gotten smaller, or if I slow playback down, it becomes something more like a contrabass. Often these techniques work better on mono materials. So if I go to a piano riff that I have here, by multiplying by two or halving by two, we can get the tempo and the pitch halving or doubling. What happens if I want something in between that? There's various software tools available, but I'm gonna use an online tool. So by using this page here, I can go to a section transpose by semitones. And what this will allow me to do is that if I want to transpose it something other than an octave measurements, I can input my original tempo here, which is the tempo of our session. And I can type in how many semitones I want it to change by. So say I want to increase it by two, I'll put in minus two, and it will tell me what tempo to put in to make a playback at a two semitones difference. So it's saying 102.453. So when I go back to Ableton, if I put 102.45, 
and now that I play this back, its pitch will have altered by two semitones. Or if I wanted a particular note within here to be changed and keep the rest at its original pitch, I'll put this back to 115. And then just maybe say, if I wanted that note there to be changed, I could put a break point in there and a break point put in afterwards there. I'll put it in another one because I want to keep that one in its original position. And now this point is the one we have to change here because by altering this here, you can see it is changing the playback speed of this note here. So if I put that one, when I click on it, to 102.45, now when I play this back, play it again. Put it back to its original. Obviously there's easier methods to do this, but originally this is what would have been done in order to sample a single sound and then get pitch variations of that sound.